What's up, Wealth Nation? In this video, we are going to be sharing with you the answers to your questions, which is Darius and Carmen, do I get a 1090 policy, a 4060 policy? Do I get a whole life policy or should I get an index universal policy? Now, I don't know. Let's now, decide. The most important thing is for you to be able to answer that question and not be dependent upon your agent to tell you. 100%. So in this video, get out your pen and paper and, and, and your calculator and, and pay attention to exactly everything that we're sharing with you because we are spilling the tea and we are breaking it down in a simplistic form so that you can make the best decision for yourself like Darius just said because at the end of the day for us it's all about empowering you so that you have the knowledge that you need to move forward and take action so go ahead and hang tight we're going to flip to our screen and show you all the deets all right, ladies and gentlemen, why is this information so important? Well, we want you to know that creating the right banking policy is important, but it's just the first step in your banking journey. And we want to arm you with the tools that you need to create your own banking policy so that you can start banking and get out of analysis paralysis and start creating cash flow today. There are no fancy formulas. It's just plain old math. That's all you need. Now, we want you to also understand that there's no secret. Just get a calculator. It's that simple. Don't always take the figures that you see on paper as verbatim. Do a little bit of math to uncover what is your best option. Now, let's go through a little bit of backstory. And what we want you to really get here, remember we're spilling the tea, is that there are more people that want banking policies than there are agents to design them. There's more of you that understand banking than there are agents who know how to create the policies for banking. So regardless of who you get your policy from, we want you to have the best policy for you and your situation, period. Now, one thing that's that's really great is that Darius and I have created a money school where we teach you every single month everything that we know about banking and you can, enjo and you can join like-minded bankers through this process so that we can all come up together and learn from each other on different ways to create cash flow. And if you are interested in that, then definitely click on the link below so that you can join the money school. Now let's go ahead and get started. Are you ready for this, Darius? I'm going to use you as my, my guinea pig to answer some of these questions. Okay, you ready? Let's, let's go. All right. So let's get started. What is the purpose of life insurance? And before you answer, I want our audience to have a moment to think about this. What is the purpose of life insurance? The purpose of life insurance is to provide a death benefit when I die. Thank you. Let's not overcomplicate it. That's it. Coverage. CYA, cover your assets <laughs> in many way, different ways than one so that if you pass, there's money left over for your family. That's it. That is the purpose of life insurance. And the point that I'm trying to make here is stop trying to make our policies something other than life insurance. So many people come to us and say, Carmen and Darius, I don't want death benefit. I want as little death benefit as possible. Well, don't get life insurance <laughs> because life insurance is life insurance. It, the point of it is to provide you death benefit. And no matter how much you manipulate these policies, you still have to have a death benefit. Because it's life insurance. Because it's life insurance. Go figure. So now knowing this, when you partner with an agent who is going to create a policy with you, we're giving you again all the deeds so that you understand how a policy should be designed for you in your particular situation. But just know that death benefit is going to co come along for the ride. Death benefit is the first thing that you'll get when getting a life insurance policy. Exactly. So moving forward, now let's shift and kind of think about our savings account. So what do you have in the bank right now? I want you to just think about that savings account for a moment and ask yourself, what is savings? What is my savings account, Darius? What, what is your savings account? My savings account is going to save me when I need money the most. So that kind of sounds, sounds like, like insurance. insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure, light bulb. Guess what? Your savings account is insurance. It's for the uh, in the event that you need money. So all we want you to do is think about replacing your savings account with life insurance. All we're doing is moving money, moving one account to another account. And guess what? Now you have cash that's available to you. And now your savings account has a death benefit. Double whammy. We're double dipping. We get cash and we have death benefit. Where else can you do this? I just want you to think about that. Where else can you get a savings account that comes along with a death benefit? Now, again, 
we don't want you to make your life insurance policy something that it's not. And the thing that your life insurance policy is not, it is not an investment. So we are not replacing your life insurance policy with investments. We want this to be the first step that you take before you start investing. So if you see my cursor on the screen, you're going to put all your money into your policy to protect it, get that CYA, and then funnel those funds into your investments, whether it be real estate, the stock market, or Bitcoin, whatever it is, cryptocurrency. Just make sure that you funnel your money through a policy first so that you get the coverage, right? You get the cash and the death benefit and then utilize those funds to invest. Right, because the thing is your policy isn't an investment, so it's not going to replace uh, investment that you already have, we're going to add it to, it's going to enhance your ability to invest in real estate in the stock market or Bitcoin. And you have to remember too, a lot of people go Darius and Carmen, Hey, I'm not getting my cash on cash return. When I put my money inside of a policy, again, this is not an investment. You always have to realize that, yeah, there is a cost to this. And the cost is you're getting life insurance. Yes, some of your cash isn't going to be there because some of that money was allocated to buy you death benefit. But when you reframe this product and the fact of the fact that you have savings, cash available, and death benefit, it changes the game and it makes you realize that this is a huge asset that you can create for yourself and your family. Now, this will make more sense when we get into the numbers and go over some illustrations for you. Exactly. So let's keep it moving. Now, what we want you to really understand again is that your savings is synonymous with storage. So all we need is a storage facility to park our funds. All right, Darius, I'm going to ask you another question. And I want you to think about this seriously, because this is a serious question. Do you want your savings to be guaranteed? I would like for my savings to be guaranteed. <laughs> and why is that? Uh, because it's guaranteed and it's my savings. If I if it's not guaranteed and I need it and it's not there, then I have a problem. We in a little bit of a problem, right? So when we ask this again, we, you need to put this into perspective because a lot of times people go, Hey, Darius and Carmen, what policy should I use? Should I get index? Should I get whole life? Should I get uh, universal? Whatever it is. Well, guess what? If you answered yes to this question, you want your savings to be guaranteed, then there's only one product that you can choose. And that's whole life insurance. That's a one product that's available to you because if you use a universal life policy an index universal life policy or a variable universal life policy, your cash value is not guaranteed. Now, a hundred percent of it is not guaranteed. Right. Now the difference with these products is that it mimics what the stock market is doing. So a lot of people will say is I can't go below zero if I have a universal life policy. Right. But there's also fees associated with having that flexibility in your life insurance policy. So if you want to mimic what the stock market is doing, just invest in the stock market itself and not do it through a life insurance policy. Correct. Because remember, we're talking about your savings. When we think about your savings and we think about it being insurance, if you reach around and try to get those funds, <laughs> you want to make sure that they're there. And regardless, if you get more or less, you want your savings to be consistent and you want it to be guaranteed. So just think about those things as you start building this banking system. Now, the next thing question that I'm going to ask you, Darius, is when do you want to stop accepting deposits or to clarify this? When do you want to stop receiving income? I don't want to stop uh, receiving deposits and I don't want to stop receiving income. Even when you retired? Even when I retire, I still have to have money available to maintain my lifestyle, though it may be different compared to how it was when I'm working, but I still need cash flow. I still need income. And hopefully you were making more money in your retirement. <laughs> so you can really enjoy it. So when you think about this, when do you want to stop accepting deposits? We have to consider the storage facility because we have to be able to continue accepting uh, funds into the storage facility. So if we think that that's the case, then again, you have two options. You want a policy that's going to be paid until a hundred years old or paid until 121. What, what does that mean? You're going to pay this policy for your whole life because if you get a single pay premium, meaning you pay a premium one time, or you get a 10 pay premium, meaning you're paying it for 10 years and then you stop or a 20 pay premium, you pay it for 20 years, then you stop. After these time periods, you can no longer add any money into to these policies. And if you just all agreed with Darius that you never want to stop receiving income, then you want up here at the top, a policy that's paid till hundred years or 121 years, meaning you can always add money to your banking systems. And remember, we have to change our mindset. Remember wealth is a mindset. We have to change our mindset in this. So when we think about a premium, typically we think about this as a burden, but if we're creating a banking system, we need to change our mindset 
debt and think about this as a deposit. Every single time we put money into our banking system, not only do we have more cash available, but we have more coverage for our family. So I like the the keywords that you're using as far as it being a banking system. And if I think about a bank, a bank never wants to stop receiving deposits. Yep. So neither should we. Yep. So when it comes to how long we want to pay our premium up until age 100 or 121, however long we can maintain receiving deposits, we want to do it. And we don't want to stop that, just like a bank. So in summary, when we think about our savings being guaranteed, we're going to use a whole life insurance policy, and we never want to stop accepting deposits. So we're going to get a whole life insurance policy that we can pay until we're 100 or 121 years old. Next, I want to address really quickly our riders. Riders are add-ons that we put onto whole life insurance policies. And these add-ons sweeten the pot, which is why I have a drink with a cherry on top, because the riders are the cherries on top of this whole life insurance policy. Remember, they're just add-ons. And riders are used to increase your benefits and protection. So if you have been following the Wealth Nation channel and you know what we're about, we talk about this banking thing, right? Being able to use our policies for banking. So when we have a whole life insurance policy, the way in which we're able to have cash immediately in the very first year is because of something called a paid up additions rider. And this allows us to accelerate the cash value inside the policy. The money that you put towards this rider is going to go towards your paid up additions, which buys you cash value and a small amount of death benefit. There's another rider that can also be put onto the policy, which is called a term rider, which allows you to increase the death benefit in the policy for a term, meaning a specific period of time, either 10, 15, 20, or 30 years, for example. So again, these are little add-ons that we put onto the policies to sweeten the pot. Now, before we move on, there's two things that we need to consider when we talk about banking is why do we go to the bank or why, what reasons do we use the bank for? One is to store our money. Two is to borrow money. Mm -hmm. So if we can satisfy both of those things with the life insurance policy and how we use it, then we're on the right track. Absolutely. So remember, we're talking about the cherries on top. So now what we want to think about is how much money should I put towards my paid up additions rider or my term rider? So we're going to use the example of $15,000. If you can afford a $15,000 premium, then what we're going to do is break that $15,000 into two sections or buckets, for example, two to three sections or buckets. So the very first thing is our base premium, next is a paid up additions rider, and then a term rider. So what does all of this mean? When we break down the premium, if we have a total of $15,000, we're gonna allocate $15,000 into different buckets. The first one will be our base premium, which is our death benefit. Remember, life insurance provides you death benefits, so we gotta have some coverage. The next thing is a paid up additions rider or the cash value. And lastly, we have something called the term rider, which is going to allow us to have more death benefit. Now, the examples that we're going to show you today are being able to allocate $15,000 in a 1090 split, meaning allocating $15,000, 10% of it is going to go towards the base premium. 90% is going to go to the paid up additions rider or 40% is going to go to base premium and 60% is going to go to the paid up additions rider. So we want you to be able able to look at the numbers on the screen and make the best decision for yourself using what was that secret formula math <laughs> to determine which one is the best for you. Now let's take a look at this uh, $15,000 premium, $15,000. 10% is going to go towards our base premium because first and foremost, we're trying to satisfy what we're actually buying, which is life insurance, which is to provide us a death benefit. What second is our cash value. So if we take 10% of the $15,000, we have $1,500 that buys us $102,000, $448 in death benefit. And if you look at the columns here on the left-hand side, this is how you know exactly what it is that you're getting. We have the base policy first, like Darius said, followed by the policy fee. So when we add these two together, we get the $1,500. Now, what happens when we have a policy that we want to add additional cash value to that doesn't satisfy the minimum amount of death benefit, we have to add term. So for this particular example, in this $15,000 policy, in order for us to be able to add the additional uh, funds, $12,636 or 
um, uh, just more funds to this policy in general, we have to add a term writer so that we can increase the death benefit so that we can accept more cash. And the cost associated with this 20 year level term rider is $864. So $864 bought us $400,000 more in death benefit. And again, like Darius was saying, is we only have $102,000 to play with. So the insurance company is saying, uh, 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 we need more money in the death benefit arena or else this policy will mech, meaning become a modified endowment contract because there is not enough death benefit to satisfy this contract. So we satisfy that using a level term. Now we know that term just buys us death benefits. So $864 bought us $400,000 in death benefit. It doesn't provide us any cash value. It just increases the window that we can add additional cash. So $12,636, 90% is going to buy us additional cash value. This goes towards our paid up edition rider. And that purchases $55,968 in death benefit. So if we add all the death benefit together, our total initial death benefit is 558,416. And that is satisfied through our initial premium of $15,000. So long story short, I know we we broke this down a lot, but the main thing that we want you to get is that $15,000 is the premium. That's the total amount of money that, for example, you said you wanted to pay on a policy. So if that's the case, we're going to break it up into three buckets in this example. 10% is going to go towards the base. We're going to have a little bit of money going towards the term rider. And then the 90% is going to go towards the paid up additions rider. Which includes our term rider. Exactly. So let's show you exactly what that breakdown looks like over a 20 year time frame. So I know there's a ton of numbers on the screen, but we highlighted exactly what you want, what we want you to look at, but let's show you what you see on the screen. We're talking about a 41 year old male and we're looking at the years in which we're, we're highlighting. So if we go 20 years out, the cash value or the total surrender value is 369,545. That is the guaranteed cash value in this policy. And the death benefit is a little over 1.3. Now let's go over to the non-guaranteed side. So for those of you who may not understand the differences is the guaranteed side is what the insurance company is obligated to pay you versus the non-guaranteed includes something called a dividend. So the dividend is a return of premium. When the insurance company pays all of their cost and their overhead, whatever is left over is returned back to all of the policy holders. However, they can't guarantee it. So in this first year, they're estimating that they could possibly pay $168 in dividend. Now let's fast forward 20 years, what that looks like in the non-guaranteed over 20 years of dividend payments and just overall growth of the policy. We have 443,407 that is available and a little over 1.5 in death benefit. So this is allocating 10% towards the base premium, 90% towards the paid up additions rider, and we're paying $15,000 for 20 years. So just remember these numbers, kind of just put it in the back of your mind because we're going to refer back to these in a few moments. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at a 40-60 split, meaning 40% of the base policy is buying you uh, $425,955 in death benefit minus the policy fee of $75. Now in this particular example, there's no point in adding a term writer because it's not necessary. The $9,000 that we have, the 60% that we have allocated towards our paid up edition writer or our cash value purchases $39,863 in death benefit. So our total death benefit is 465,818. And again, this is the exact same policy premium, um, which is $15,000. The only difference is we took 40% and put it towards the base policy and then 60% towards the paid up edition rider or cash value. Now let's compare the numbers here versus the guaranteed and non-guaranteed side over 20 years. If you notice for the 4060 policy over 20 years, we have $367,777 versus $426,713. So if you remember, if we compare that to the 1090, we'll show you on the screen, the 1090 actually gives you more money in cash. 
But before we go into that, let's make sure that we understand the comparison. Literally, the only difference is a penny (laughs) as far as what the premiums are concerned. But when we put in $12,636 in the paid up editions rider versus $9,000 in the paid up editions rider for the 4060, you see the difference that we're dealing with, which is a little over $3,000. $3,600 more is what we're paying in premium for the paid up editions rider. Right. So in a 1090, we have 90% of the premium is going towards the paid up edition rider and the term, because remember we have to add additional death benefits so that we can add that much more in cash value. Exactly. Remember this is life insurance. We always have to have a substantial amount of money available. So uh, comparing that again to the $9,000 cost of the paid up editions rider for the 4060 plan. Now let's look at those numbers. 1090 over 20 years compared to the 4060 over 20 years. And we're just, we're also highlighting, you know, five-year increments so that you can see here. So of course, everyone goes, Darius and Carmen, I want a 1090 because I'm going to get more money up front. And yes, on paper, it looks super sexy. But remember that secret sauce that we showed you, we got to do a little bit of math to determine if it makes sense for us. So hang tight because it's going to get juicy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So in the first five years, we have 70,583 versus 59,609. The premium is the same. The difference is what we where we allocated the funds, 4060 versus 1090. Let's fast forward 20 years. So again, we have 443,407 in the 1090 plan versus 426,713 in the 4060 plan. So again, congratulations for those of you who have 1090 policies. You have more money in cash value over 20 years. But that's not the most important thing. So let's compare the two numbers. We have a 1090 that has 443,000. Then we have a 4060 that has 426,000. Now, the difference between the two is that we're putting 30% more towards our paid up addition to satisfy that 1090 split. Right. We're just comparing the numbers on the screen. We have 90% compared to 60% in the paid up addition. So when we do the math, a little bit of subtraction, that's 30% more that we're putting in the paid up editions writer. All right, Wealth Nation. So here's the question I want you to answer. If you put in 30% more, how much more money should you have? I hope you're screaming 30% more, at least. At least. And remember, we're talking about over 20 years. 30% more over 20 years. At least. But where's your calculators? Do the math. What's the difference? The difference isn't 30%. It ain't 30%. You can eyeball it and see that it's not 30%. <laughs> the difference is 4%. If we compare the cash values and, and subtract it by one, once we compare those numbers, there's only a difference of 4%. So what? if I put in 20 years, tw- if I put in 30% more over 20 years, I should have significantly more money in cash value, which isn't reflected here. That is not reflected. But you know what is reflected is the answer that everybody is trying to figure out, which is the base premium carries the policy. (laughs) Because in this instance, we are proving that the 4060 plan is more efficient because we put in 30% less in the paid up additions rider, but the base premium still kicks butt. Yeah. Yeah. Because here... What is shown to us or what we see initially is that it's just more money. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what you see. It's more money. Like, let's go back to the screen. What we see here, like we said, if you were just to see a 1090 plan, you go, oh my God, in the very first year, I have $12,000. Of course I want $12,000 versus $8,600. Especially if I'm spending $15,000. To get it up front. Right. But we can't just look at things on the surface. You have to look long term. You have to look year by year and you have to understand the amount of money that you're putting into the policy and figuring out if you're getting that back. Mm -hmm. So Wealth Nation, take a minute and ask yourself this question just to make sure we're on the same page. Which policy is more efficient? And we hope that you are screaming on the other side of that screen, the 4060, because, again, you're putting in 30 percent more money in the 1090 to only have 4% more over 20 years. So my question, Darius, to you is where's the rest of that money going? It's not going to our policy. It's not. That's the, a lot of money that is not being paid out in death benefit. (laughs) 
if you think about that from a different perspective. Well, if you say death, death benefit, let's compare death benefit. Um, the death benefit is roughly the same. If I take a look at the 1090, $1,510,039 compared to one million one hundred fifty-seven thousand uh, one hundred and three. Okay, let's say it went to death benefit. Mm -hmm. There's a difference of about 400,000, not even 400, 300,000 in death benefit. Mm -hmm. So that's where it went. Mm -hmm. We could argue that. We can argue that. But I want that in my cash value because of how Mm -hmm. I'm designing this policy. Exactly. Now, let's take a look at a comparison and just say we're only going to maintain this policy um, for five years. The paid up addition rider. We're only going to maintain this for five years instead of the 20 years. Because what we want to do a comparison of is how we actually design policies versus a policy that has more money like a 1090. Mm -hmm. Is the efficient efficiency still the same? Mm -hmm. So if we see on our screen, we have a 1090 policy paid up additions is being paid for 20 years versus a 4060 plan for the paid up additions being paid for five years. And this is typically how Darius and I design our policies. We want to compare the two because we've seen PUAs being paid for 20 years on end. And actually you have to pay (laughs) it for this long in order for a 1090 plan to make sense versus just being able to dump in money in the first few years in in the paid up additions rider. Right. Especially if I'm going to pay Andrew $64 for a term right now, I want to use it and that's a level term for 20 years. So let's pay it for the amount of time that I have the ability to pay it. Exactly. So again, the numbers don't really change in the first five years, right? It's 70,000 versus 59, but let's take a snapshot. Let's keep going and let's go 20 years. Of course, there's going to be more money in cash value, 443,407 versus 235,458. There's going to be more money in this policy. Why? Because we paid $15,000 for 20 years versus the five years in the 4060 plan. Now, remember that math that we did earlier to compare which policy was more efficient? We're going to do the same thing here. So remember the cash values that we have here. And all we want to do is segment the money that we've put in the paid up additions rider. Right. So we have a cash value for 20 years in a 1090 policy, 443,407 compared to only five years. And we have a cash value uh, at a 4060 split of 235,458. Now let's see where we got these numbers from. If we take a look at the uh, premium, the allocated premium amounts, the only thing we're going to do is compare $12,636 because $864 is going towards our term writer. So we're only going to take in consideration $12,636 over the next 20 years. And then when we look at a 4060, the cash value that's that our paid up addition that we're putting into this policy over the next five years is $9,000. So when we take a look at that, those numbers, $12,636 times 20 years comes out to $252,720 in PUA premium that we're putting into this 1090 policy. Now the $9,000 in paid up additions that we're putting into this policy over five years comes out to $45,000. So if we compare the two numbers, we're putting in 82% more money in the paid up addition premium when we just take a look at the dollars. But when we look at the cash value, there's only a difference of 46%. And again, that's over 20 years. And that's over 20 years. So we put in $45,000 to get $235,458 compared to $252,000 to get $443,407. So again, we're going back to efficiency. If we're putting in 82% more in the 1090 plan, then we should expect at least 82% or more in growth, but that's just not the case. So again, this is the information that we want to arm you with so you can determine exactly what's happening in the background of the policies and how their growth is performing, because don't just take what you see on the surface. Make sure you do the math and determine how much you're putting in versus how much you're receiving in cash value you over a longer period of time. Yeah. And the way I calculated this is I'm just comparing the numbers, 45,000 divided by 
1720 and then i'm subtracting it by one to see the the difference between the numbers and then same thing uh with the cash value i did 235,458 divided by 443,407 subtracted it by one to see the difference between the two numbers exactly so what we want to make sure again wealth nation is that you understand this information and if you want to continue to learn more about policies and how you can continue to finance your lifestyle using policies then we invite you to join our money school and now you can see tada we have shown you the exact banking blueprint that we use to make thousands of illustrations and we need to make a little recap just to make sure that we're on the same page so let's recap everything that we've learned on how you can design your very own private banking system in order to create cash flow and finance your lifestyle we all understand the purpose of life insurance and that is to provide you coverage so we need death benefit in order for this thing to work first and foremost is death benefit Next is we've decided that we want our savings to be guaranteed. We don't want it to go up, down, round and round. We want it to be constant and we want it to be guaranteed. So if that's the case, our money is going to go into a whole life insurance policy. The storage facility is now a whole life insurance policy. We're not going to use any other permanent life insurance. And next, if we want to continue to receive income for life, we need to put our money into a whole life insurance policy that allows us to pay it for our whole life. We don't want to be pigeon held into a specific period of time in order for this thing to work. Now, there are certain circumstances where you may use a single 10 pay or 20 pay, but every case is different. If we're talking generalities, for the most part, you want to create an ATM machine that's always going to accept deposits. Right. And again, when we're thinking about banks, we need to satisfy two things. We need to have a storage facility where we store our money and we need to have the ability to borrow uh, money from that said storage facility or bank. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is what allows us to continue to do that by satisfying these these things. Exactly. And next, what we talked about is how much premium should go towards base versus paid up additions. And in this presentation, we did a comparison of a 1090 versus 4060. And what we saw with the math that we did in this specific example is that a 1090 has more money in it. But when it comes to efficiency, a 4060 is more efficient. Mm -hmm. And you have for to, the cash value. Exactly. And you have to ask yourself what do you want? And the assumption hopefully is that you want more efficiency. You want your money to perform at its best. So like we said earlier, if you like the content that we're sharing with you and you want to continue to be surrounded by not only Darius and myself, but other like-minded individuals, then we invite you to join the money school. Now, if you give me a few moments, I'm just going to break down exactly what is entailed in the money school, because this is a popular thing that people keep asking us about. But I want to be clear and set up the expectation that the Wealth Nation Money School is for anyone but it's not for everyone. And if you are ready to take action, get amazing results and not make excuses, then we want you to join us right now. Click the link below <laughs> or go to wealthnation.io forward slash membership. We'll put the link in the description so that you have it. But again, we want you to take action, get amazing results and not make excuses. So a part of the Wealth Nation Money School, we are going to flood you with amazing content. And the first thing is you're going to have access to the Money Blueprint 2.0, which is a value of $10,000. This is our flagship six hour lifestyle banking crash course, plus 60 days of live implementation that will walk you through exactly how to create, maintain a profitable independent banking system for your family and your business starting from scratch. Now, the one thing that we want you to keep in mind with the money school is this is everything that Darius and I have learned throughout our whole journey. We are giving it to everyone in our banking systems and our banking schools because we want to make sure that everyone comes up and learns together. The other thing that you're going to get is entry into our private coaching community, which the value is $20,000. You will have direct access to us as your coaches, and you can ask any of your fellow freedom seekers questions, get feedback, learn best practices, and have constant accountability and support into your journey of financial independence. Next, you're going to get any step-by-step -step guides and templates that we create for you, which is a value of $5,000, which is the proven systems you can plug into to keep more money, make more money and multiply money faster than ever before, just like the wealthy families and most profitable banks already do. 
but there is more. <laughs> Guess what? We have weekly power hours and Q&As valued at $2,500. You're going to work directly with us and other members to build and perfect your lifestyle banking systems. And lastly, all upcoming courses, resources, and content that we put out will be included, and we value that at $50,000. Darius and I have been at this for almost seven years now at the time of making this video, and like we said, we are giving you everything that we know and are currently using in our banking systems. And everything that we're going to learn in the future because you'll still have access to it. Guess what? And we have friends who are going to be guest speakers, and you're going to be able to learn so much from them as well who are also banking. So this information is free for members. It's going to include in-depth courses on how to utilize your lifestyle banking systems to invest in all different ways to include real estate or in your business and get results faster than ever before. Okay, so let's recap. Just in case you need to see everything again, all of the value that you see on your screen, access to the money blueprint, value $10,000, entrance into the private coaching community, $20,000, step-by-step guides and templates, $5,000, weekly power hours valued at $2,500, and all upcoming courses and resources and content that we put out will be $50,000 value. We add all of that together, ladies and gentlemen. If you still have your calculators, add it up, make sure that we're right. And we get $87,500, which is the value that we are bringing to you. But guess what? Because we understand that financial freedom, independence, and peace is so desirable to people these days, we want to make sure that we make this available to all of our action takers, make it available and affordable. You're you're not going to pay $87,500. You're only going to pay $119 a month to join Darius and myself live every month and all of our bankers. So again, go ahead. What are you waiting on? Click on the link up below in the description or go to wealthnation.io forward slash membership and join us in the money school. Not only are you getting everything that you see on the screen, but you're going to continue to learn all of the banking implementation tools, any new news that we see that's out. We're sharing all of this information with you because we really realize that this information needs to be shared with the public. And for those of you, like we said, are ready to take action and join us in the money school, we want to see you ASAP so that we can start learning from each other and sharing all of the knowledge that we have. All right, Wealth Nation, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join us. Join the membership. Like we said, join the nation so that you can continue to meet with us weekly, learn everything that there is to know about banking and creating financial freedom for yourself and your family. So make sure you go to wealthnation.io forward slash membership so that we can see you inside of our community. Exactly. And continue to empower yourself. Remember to own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.